Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to sell some clothes and probably some extra fabric or wool if we have it. And then we're going to talk about the next big plan for the series here. Uh, all right, so let's get going on the clothes first. Actually, let's look at finances. We haven't looked at finances for a little while. Um, it is, I, did I just mention it's April 1st? If not, hey, guess what? It's April 1st. Yeah, I went ahead and, and just blew through February and March. I did my usual farm chores, did my first hay cutting. And, um, you know, I want to think, here's the thing. We are, we're getting close to the end of this series. Um, and I want to move things along more quickly. So you're going to see less and less of the same thing over and over again, like the hay harvest. Not necessarily saying you'll never see me do it again on this series. But uh, I just want to get things, uh, I want to move things on a little more quickly since we're getting towards the end of the series, uh, wrapping it up. Um, now... I, it is my intention, uh, the good Lord willing, um, that we are going to start another series. And I'm not talking about the, you know, the logging series. That's that's ongoing too. But I'm talking about we're going to do another a new farming simulator series on a new map. Um, I'm still pondering exactly what map it's going to be and exactly how it's going to go. So I'm not going to say anything more about that at this point, uh, other than to say this is not the end of farming simulator for me not by a long shot it's just i'm just talking about the end of this particular series our first you know greenhorn series here on elm creek okay so that being said uh what we're gonna do is sell some clothes uh no we were gonna look at finances sorry uh, all right so finances let's see in february we spent 118,449 dollars on a new vehicle um what was that vehicle <laughs> I can't remember what it was. What did we buy? We bought something that cost us over a hundred thousand dollars. I can't remember what it was. You guys probably remember. Um, so uh, nothing happened in March in terms of purchasing any new vehicles. Uh, it'll come to me later what that was. And in um, in January, of course, you know we we spent o over a half a million, uh, one and a half million dollars on uh, new buildings for our new farmyard setup, which I'm really enjoying. It's awesome. And then let's see, vehicle running costs, fifteen thousand dollars in March for for doing the hay cutting. Leasing costs. I didn't actually lease the um I didn't lease the two big M mowers with the hitch on the back. This time I just did it with my own mower. Uh because you know that's that's like another forty thousand dollars down the drain each time I do that. So I decided not to do that, uh at least, you know, at least for the first hay cutting. Uh so I'm, you know, I'm going to keep my eye open for those to come on sale, but for me, I'm not, I may not do that anymore in terms of leasing both of them because it costs so much money. All right. Uh, we could lease to own one of them too, I suppose, but we'll see. Uh, property maintenance is about the same. Most of this leasing, you know, is just ongoing lease to own stuff. And then apparently I, I leased an extra trailer or something. I think I can't remember, to be honest with you. I uh, know I got a terrible memory. Um, Production costs are usual. Let's see, we made $114,000 in March on our greenhouses and one hundred seventeen dollars in February, which is really good. And then our biogas plant, we made $77,500 in February, $67,051 in March. We paid out $7,800 in wages and seventy three hundred dollars for goods distribution to our workers, and yeah, that's pretty much where we are now in February. Oh, I think I know what this is. We I purchased a trailer and the other. Oh yeah, and the other cedar. Yeah, I completely forgot that. I, I I forgot that I had done that off camera. But here is the footage from the both of those purchases, so you can see that happening. Okay, yeah, so I, w I was originally going to return the the new Estrella cedar because, you know, we got this one on sale. But I got to thinking, you know what, considering what is coming up, 
I decided to just keep this one too so we have two so that way we can get two going at the same time. I think I may have told you guys this too but a, another large tractor is on the on the list of things to purchase. I want to get a big boy tractor again for what's coming up. Okay so um, yeah I think that takes care of finances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the pickup truck connect to the gooseneck trailer. We're going to load up our clothes load up our extra wool and fabric if we have any sell that and then when that's finished we will I'll show you what's gonna happen next okay so I just uh, topped off both of the spinneries with the wool that I had and we don't have any extra wool uh, because we added that second spinnery we might not actually have any extra wool but that should mean theoretically we have some extra fabric or maybe we have uh, more clothes. So let's take a look and see where that's all at. Um, we want to be in this warehouse here. Okay, so we have a little bit of extra fabric, uh, fabric rather there. Um, and we're just about jam packed with sugar, but we'll sell that I think in July. Uh, what about wool? We have no extra wool, but we do have some extra fabric. So that, so we'll sell that too. Okay, so let's set the fabric to, well, hold on a second. What is the spinnery or the tailor shop looking like? I mean, it's, it's definitely got enough fabric to keep going. So yeah, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and sell the little bit of extra fabric that we have? I'm going to deactivate that for now. So what we're going to do is set the close to spawning. And we will also set, well, here, let's do the close first, and then we'll, we'll pick up a little extra bit of fabric there. All we got for clothes. Um, whoops, let me double check. Yep, 867 liters of clothes left. If we grab the fabric, also set that back to storing. Set that to spawning. Is that just going to give us... I think that's just going to give us one pallet. Because there's a thousand liters in a pallet. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Set the fabric back to distributing. Alright, now let's see who's going to give us the best price for all of this. Close. Looks like MJ's Mini Mart's got the best price. And it looks like the grocery store is the only place we can sell the fabric because we're obviously going to sell to ourselves. Does MJ's Mini Mart take fabric? It does not. Okay, so that means we can also um, throw this on the back of here. Good. Okay, so let's head over to MJ's Mini Mart first to we'll sell the clothes. Make ourselves a nice little pile of change. Probably going to be somewhere close to... Yeah, it's going to be a little, little over $100,000. But we'll take it. And then we'll make another 3000 3, some odd bucks from that one pallet of fabric there. Missed the one pallet there. So we made 103,000, so it's going to be um, 113,000. Or no, yeah. So we made about 113,000 off of that deal. Pretty good. Okay. Let's run this over to the grocery store. $13,000. 
3758. That brings us up to six hundred and thirty-two thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars. All right. I'm gonna move to April third, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because it's gonna give us a little bit more money from the greenhouses and the biogas plant. And then on April third, I'll bring you guys back, and we're gonna make a large purchase. Oh, speaking of purchases, what's in the sale, by the way? Uh, nothing we want. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys in a couple of days. All right, guys. We are back. It's April 3rd now. And uh, we are up to $742,356 from our sales a couple days ago, plus the biogas plant, plus the greenhouses. So here's what's going to happen. I've been uh, giving this some thought. Uh, our next big thing that we're going to do and I did mention this to you guys in a previous episode, is a cereal factory. And I'm going to, um, in, in order to support a cereal factory, in fact, here, let's just look at it real quick. I'm not going to buy the factory itself yet until I, I, I have everything I need to support it. But if we look at the cereal factory, uh, it's $110,000. So, you know, it's expensive, but not like crazy. Uh, we're going to have to supply raisins, honey, oats, and corn. So my plan for honey is to buy a small field, load it up with a ton of flowers and put a bunch of beehives next to it. We're going to get, we're going to purchase a couple of really large fields to grow oats and corn on. And then raisins, I'm probably just going to buy straight up. Um, because we would have to get into grapes in order to support raisins. And that is a huge thing and I'm not sure I want to even uh, yeah here's what it looks like by the way uh, I'm not sure I even want to do that in this in this series I'm not saying we'll, we'll we never we will never do grapes but uh, I haven't decided if if I want to do it in this particular series uh, when the time comes we will probably put the cereal factory right here um, over in this little industrial area that we have okay but so the first step is to get established with corn and and oats Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the map. Um, field 25, uh, or more specifically farmland 45, as you can see, already has corn planted on it. Um, unfortunately, there aren't any large fields that the computer farmers have planted oats on this year. So we're going to have to take that into, um, well, there's a couple things we could do. Um, we're going to buy this for sure. That's already decided, so let's just do it right now. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot more to this land than just the current field, and we will be expanding that and basically maximizing every last square foot of space that we have on this land, and that'll increase the yield of this field. I mean, if you look at the land that it's not using, it'll probably almost double its yield if we if we throw in everything up here, of course, we'll have to go across the road, but I can't do anything about that. And then all of this extra land that's not currently being used. Okay, so that is now our field, and it's got a crop of corn on it. And we're going to expand that. And probably, if, I, if it works out, I'll probably plant even more corn. So it's one big cornfield. Okay, now, as far as bar or not barley, I'm sorry, oats goes, there's a couple things we could do. We could, um, we could wait one more year and see if 70, which is the largest field on the map, comes up for, uh, or, or it, uh, uh, if the farm, the computer farmer plants oats on it. I would also, however, take 10. I would take 18. I would take. 53, which has a lot of more, a lot more land that we could turn into field. I take 20 or 21 or even 55 as, uh, or 24. So basically any of these other really large fields, if the computer farmer plants oats on it, but we would have to wait one more year to do that. Um, the other thing we could do is we could Go ahead and just purchase 56. Um, we'd have to take just a tiny loan out 
to do that, which is not a big deal. Expand this all the way out as far as we can. The one thing I like about this field is then it's contiguous with the rest of our farmland. Um, not that that's a huge deal, but you know, it's kind of nice to have everything close by, but even, even that doesn't matter now because we have other fields uh, elsewhere. Uh, but you know, this would be, this can be a pretty decent sized field if we expand it. Uh, 51 also is a lot larger than the current field because it goes all the way back to here. So this could also, also all be added as field. And then 53, same thing. And there's, you know, there's only one small field here, but look at all of this extra land that could be converted into more field. Um, I'm almost tempted. Well, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is, oh, and then of course we, ha that's right. We have to figure out what we're going to do about bees also. <laughs> Lots of things to do. I think I'd rather get established with corn and oats before we worry too much about bees and honey because we can always store it in our silo. You know, we don't have to use it immediately. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I feel what I feel like doing is purchasing 18 as well and expanding that and just planting oats on it. And that, you know, that's not to say that if one of these bigger fields has oats planted on it next year, we couldn't buy that and then, you know, use 18 for something else. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do. That might not be the absolutely smartest move we could do, but I think it's what we're going to do. The other, you know, the other large fields that I might be interested in don't really have crops on them that I, I'm interested in. Like, for example, 10 has sunflowers. Well, I don't care about sunflowers, right? Um, 39 has canola and 58 have canola. But again, I have no, there's nothing I can do with that other than just sell it straight up, which I don't really want to do. 70, unfortunately, doesn't have any crop on it at all. Uh, neither does 38 or 56. So, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and also purchase 56. So we're going to need to borrow, let's see, 50, around 50 grand to do that. So let's go to the bank. I haven't had to borrow money from the bank in a long time, which is a good thing, of course. But, by the way, in the sales, there is a Crone Big X Forage Harvester. I just, I, I had originally planned on eventually getting this. The problem with this, and I've mentioned this to you guys before, is that it comes with a very small header. The advantage of it is that it can harvest the grass and throw it right into the forage wagon with additive in one fell swoop. But we kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, we kind of already have that set up going by leasing the big M's with the hitches and using the forage wagons and, it, and it's doing the same thing. So I just don't, I don't, I don't think we're going to do it this way. If, if they would make larger forage headers, for these harvesters, it would be worth it, but they don't. I mean, the uh, the Crone Big M has like a 10 meter header. I think six meters is probably the largest header you can get for these. If we look at forage harvester headers, it's gonna be, I guess I could look on the mod hub. It's gonna be this one here. So it's only 6.2 meters. There's nothing else that's larger. That's 6.1 meters, you know, that'll, that'll work. So we're not really gaining anything over what we're already doing. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to show that to you and let you know that I had considered it. Okay. So I think we have a plan. Let's go back into here, uh, go into the bank and I don't want to borrow any more than I have to, because we're going to, you know, we have lots of money coming in every day, but I want, we need to get started on this today because uh, April is the last month we can plant oats. Yes, yeah, so we have to do this today if we're going to plant oats on that field, which is what I think I'm going to do. Okay, so anyway, back into here. Let's go to here. And we're going to borrow 50,000 and see if that's enough. So that gets us up to 264. What did we need for this field again? 266. Okay, so... I'm going to need a little bit of 
operating cash too. So why don't we borrow another $30,000, which we'll be able to pay off, you know, very, very quickly, like maybe even tomorrow in game day, or definitely we'll be able to pay it off in May. Okay. So now what we can do is go here. We're going to purchase 58, well, farmland 18. That is now also ours. And next up, I've got some huge uh, field expansion work to do. All right, so the start, so we're going to start that by leasing the tree devourer. Okay, so let's go into here. We're going to go into forestry equipment. The tree devourer, if you don't know what that is, it's a mod or devour trees, I guess. I, I use this on the forestry series and it, it's an amazing tool because it, it mulches, but it also, you know, picks up chips for you too. All right, so we need the capacity. We need the pipe on it. And I think this is Bass Ackwards. Real should be the one with the pipe. Unreal should be the one without, but it's just kind of weird. But I had to have, make sure it had capacity and had the Unreal setting, which adds a lot of money to it. But, you know, we're just going to lease this. So it's only going to cost us $6,300. And we will definitely make this back and much, much more by selling the wood chips that we'll get from it. Okay, so we've leased that. And we should be able to use this with any of our tippers. I didn't look to see what that required for horsepower. I don't think it's like huge. It required, yeah, 150 horsepower. Okay, I think we'll use the um, the, the JBC for this job. Just because the Fint, even though it's got more horsepower, it's got the wider tires and that could be a, you know, be a problem for us. So let's pull around here. We'll get hooked up and then we'll go grab one of our tippers. And then I'll just have to figure out, well, you know what I might do? Hmm. If we could get away with keeping the chips in our tippers, then I don't have to pick them back up again later. But we're going to need, you know, we're going to need those trailers for other things, particularly when we harvest our, our wheat. But we have quite a few tippers. So, yeah, you know what I think I'll do? We will fill up the, the Flegel trailers. And if, um, if we end up needing them later, I'll, I'll just dump the chips on the ground somewhere. It's not that big a deal. I want to hang. I want to hang on to the Stroutmans and the two cramp trailers, the big red ones, for you know our grain harvest later. So let's start with these, and then if you know if we fill these up and need more trailers, well then we'll also grab one of the the Stroutmans too. I'm just kind of figuring this out as we go. <laughs> okay. So let's go over to this field over here first we're basically just going to eat the trees and chip them up get them out of the way and the stumps at the same time this tool is is amazing it's so much faster than you know doing the traditional chipping method like we did on field 71 so we're going to remove all the trees um basically starting here and all this brush so we can convert this part to field we'll keep everything around the the lake. Uh, we're not going to be able to remove those anyways because we don't own that property. And then we'll, you know, turn around and do the same thing um, over on field uh, 50 where the corn is. Whoops. Sorry about that. Unload pipe first. Unload pipe first. Oh, I have to have it selected. Sorry, I got the back end selected. There we go. All right, why isn't that working? Pipe out is, oh, 
Right. I was I was trying to do unfold. There we go. And then B is turn on. Did I forget to hook something up? I forgot to hook the lines up. That might help. Let's get some light going here. And go to it. Oh, this thing does not do brush. But, you know, we can... I think we're just going to leave the brush here because the plot, when we plow over here, that'll that'll kill the brush off. Save ourselves a step. Oh, man, this is so nice, you guys. Can I get this tree, too, because it's sticking out a little bit? Nope, I can't. Okay. Go over here. What about this tree? Yep. Eat those trees, baby. Probably will not be able to get this little tree, but let's try it anyway. Yep. Oh. It says I don't have access, but it's still trying to eat it. That's weird. Okay. What about this big elm? It'd be nice to get it out of the way just for our trailers pulling in and out, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one. Nope. Okay. Well, we tried. Actually, can I... Can I just lumberjack these? No, it's not going to let me. Oh, wait, is it? No, but you know what I can do? I can delete it. Okay. I'm not going to delete the big elm because technically I shouldn't have been able to do that either. It's not on my property, but... Since we already uglified it by removing its foliage, I figured we'd get it out of the way. Okay. Let's get all this, all these trees out of here. This is all going to be converted over to field for oats. This big elm is going to give us a lot of chips. Right now we're at 10,981 liters. Let's see what this gives. We got 13,000 more liters just from that tree alone. Very nice. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the way to remove trees off your property. Especially these trees. Meaning that, you know, elm trees are a pain in the butt to work with otherwise. All right, let's go down to this other end of the field. We're only 33% full on this trailer, too. It looks like it's more than 33%, but that's what it's telling us, so... Fine by me. We're not going to be able to do anything, of course, on that property. Um, do we... I don't think we own that little section there. No. Okay, so our line... Oh, we don't even own those trees. Okay, so yeah, we're not going to be able to take any of those trees down. I thought it's... Kind of scooched over this way, but I guess it doesn't. What about this tree here, though? Can we get rid of this one? 
I guess, well, probably not, because I don't think we own any of this little patch of grass, which is unfortunate. That would have added a nice little extra thingy to the field. But, here, before I, I cut that tree and screw it up, yeah, see, we're, we're definitely off of our property. Okay, so that tree can stay. It sucks, though, because it's going to potentially screw up with turning around at the end of the field, but I can't do anything about it. It's not my tree to cut down. Okay. You know what we could do? We could go talk to the neighbors over there and offer them some cash to cut those trees down. We could even replant them. I got an idea. This is going to cost me a little bit of money. But it's just that you know, even though we can't do anything with this property, you know, having a little extra space for turning around is going to be helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the, the neighbors if we can cut the trees down and then we'll replant them closer to the street for them. That's what we're going to do. Can I cut your trees down and then replant them closer to the street? I'll give you an extra five grand too. Cash up front, you can use that to... Uh, to buy some at Christmas presents, even though it's April. It's actually Christmas for me in the real world. Wait, what? This it? You mean this isn't the real, real world? Well, I think it is for you. Never mind, let's not even have that conversation. The deal is this. You let me cut your trees down, I give you $5,000 cash right now, and I replant the trees for you closer to the root. Fair enough? Fantastic. Oh, th thank you very much. You have a nice day. Okay. <laughs> So, we took care of that. All right, let's go here. And we want to go to landscaping and trees. And is that... Yeah, that's a $2,500 tree. Okay, we're going to move this to the road. And then this one here is a $600 tree. We'll move it closer to the road. Okay, and then we we're just gonna have to delete these because it's not it's not gonna let me. Oh, is it gonna let me cut it? All right, I got an idea. I got an idea. Let's go to here. Let's delete this tree. Delete that tree. Pay our pay the neighbor five thousand dollars cold hard cash. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get onto our property. Should we do it with this tree too? Yeah, let's do it with this tree, too. So, here, we're going to go back into here. No. Go back into here. Landscaping trees. I think that's going to be another... Yeah, that's another one of those trees. Okay. We'll plant that there. We'll delete this. It just gives us a little bit more clearance there for turning around. All right, now what we're going to do is go into here. We're going to go to landscaping trees. We're going to give ourselves a $2,500 tree and two $600 trees. Since we already paid for those, we're going to give ourselves the money back. So basically $25, 
And now we're going to chip them as if we chipped the trees in their original spot. Make sense? Is it clear as mud? Okay. So that way we get the chips for them, like we would have if we would have chipped them in their original spot. And recoup a little bit of money later on. Can't believe this tipper is only 46% full. It visibly looks like it's about 95% full. Wait a minute. You know what? It is full. That capacity that we see in the lower right corner by the speedometer, that, that's actually the capacity of the devourer. There's some kind of magic technology to where this thing can hold that many wood chips inside of it. So I, I remember that from when I was doing this on Silver Run because it was kind of confusing me at first. Okay. Very good. So this trailer is indeed full. Like I said, we're going to try and leave it in there if we if we can get away with it. You know what, though? Um, when I hook up to the next flegal, that's probably going to darn near fill that all the way up, too. Well, well, let's just see what it does. Like I said, it's not that big a deal for me to end up tipping these on the ground if I have to in order to use these tippers during harvest, but we'll see what we can get away with. Yeah, as soon as we hook up to this other flegal, it's going to start filling it up too. I just don't know. Oh, no, what? Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess it wants to fill the Stroutmans. What the heck? Okay, well... Then Oh, I see what happened. Okay, so the the implement emptied itself into the two Stroutmans and now we see a 40,000 liters which is the capacity of the Flegel. It's kind of weird, but that's what's happening here. Uh all right. Well, here. Let me Backed it up a little further. That's not exactly what I had in mind. But since it started filling these guys up, I guess we'll use them instead. Either that or I, you know, either that or I dump them, but yeah. Whatever. We'll see. <laughs> like, well, what in the world's going on here? Okay. So let's take this out to field 50 and start filling it up. All right. So our property on this end is bordered by this road. I mean, more or less. Yeah. So it goes, kind of wraps around there, and then it goes all the way to the creek. So there's a bunch of birch trees that we want to remove. Well, I think, we'll, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll, re we'll need to remove them. Let's just go look at it. But then there's a, a stand of elm trees down there that we definitely need to get out of there. Oh, you know what, though? We can't plant corn on that steep of a bank. Shut up. Okay, well, what we're, what we're going to have to do then is if the trees are down more on the bank like that one, there's no point in taking it down because that's too steep anyway. 
So we'll just take the ones that are more on the flat here. Yeah, that, we're gonna have, <laughs> my goodness. By the time we chip these elm trees, we're gonna probably have all of our tippers filled up, which is a good problem to have. I mean, we made almost $80,000 off of the last batch of wood chips that we did. And I think this thing is already at capacity anyways. It does, well, here, let's do one more tree and see if we still see chips going into the trailer. I can tell it's super heavy because the tractor's having to work to pull it. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we still have a little more room, so let's try and fill it all the way up. It might be a, a slow ride back home. I'm not going to do any of the big trees because, well, no, I guess we can. It'll store it inside the head if it doesn't get it in the trailer. Oh, okay, so that's the end of our property there, eh? We might have to do something similar that we did before where we buy the trees from the property owner and move them. Can we get this one? It's weird that it lets me grind it, but it doesn't let me... It lets me remove the foliage, but it doesn't let me actually grind it, which is odd. Okay. Well, if, if I feel like that stand of elm is going to be a pain in the neck, then we'll offer to buy and replant just like we did, you know, before. But let's just leave it there for now and see, you know, how things turn out. Yeah, we're still filling up the trailer. I'm just, <laughs> we, might, we might have to go get the fence to haul it back though, yeah? We'll see how it goes. As soon as the pipe stops, throwing wood chips in the back, then that, that means the trailer is full. We don't lose anything, though, because it keeps it inside the harvester head. Or at least until that fills up. It's supposed to have a capacity of 50,000. All right, let's see what happens when we take down the big boy here. Oh, you know what, though? We are at... Yeah, I don't want to risk wasting any chips uh, from that big tree because there's a lot of money sitting there. Let's hit another smaller tree. I want to see what this says. Yeah, this trailer is actually at max capacity. No, it isn't. This is almost, uh, I don't, what is the capacity of that trailer? It confuses me because it's, you know, when you have the head or uh, the head on, it doesn't show you the normal information. Let's go to trailers. That should hold 52,000 liters of product. It currently has 49,000.
But again, let's hit the small trees just to make sure we don't screw us, you know, lose any product from the big ones. What I think happens though here again is I think it just stores it in the header. What I don't know though is what happens if you go beyond the capacity of even the header? You know, then do you start losing it? That's the thing. All right, so we're at 51,471 now. I think that's what the trailer has, right? Yeah, 51,471. So it is showing us that down below. It's just saying it's 50% instead of 100%. Let's hit one more of the smallest trees, and then I think we're going to say this one's pretty well loaded up. Yeah, now it's at 52. Okay. Oh, we're doing okay pulling this. I think it was just the running of the implement that was making it feel like we were too slow. All right, I'm going to take this back, go get the other Stroutman, come back, and eat some more trees. But I have a feeling like we're going to fill all of our tippers up. And if that's the case... We might end up needing to dump some of this because we have to, at the very least, we have to keep the cramp trailers available for our grain harvest. And I have two of those now. We could also use the manure spreader tra trailer and convert that to a normal tipper uh, if we have to as well. So that's another option for us. Let's also turn the pipe off so it doesn't try and squirt stuff in the trailers we don't want it to. There we go. Okay. I'm going to send this guy back out to the property. And we're going to jump in another tractor and bring another tipper out. So that way I can have, I can keep the JCB working while the other tractor runs the trailers back and forth. Because I have a feeling like we're going to fill up this Stroutman and probably also will need the other Flagel. Flagel. Flagel Flagel. And if we even need more than that, then we're going to convert our manure spreader trailer to a normal tipper and fill that up too. We're not going to use the cramps because we need those, like I said, for the grain. All right, let's get back to it. Chow down on some more trees.
Okay, I think what will happen here is the excess should stay in the header. I'm going to actually save the game in case I'm wrong about that. Because I don't want to lose all the money we get from this tree. Okay, yeah, so if we look at... If we look at the total amount, the percentage, well, and even the value, is showing our total capacity. That includes the tipper and what the header can hold. Because if we look at the trailer, we can see it's full at 52,000. But if we look at here, we actually have 57,000. So that makes sense. Now I, now I understand exactly what's going on there. That always confused me a little bit. So when we uh, drive by this Flegel here, it should flip over and just dump the rest of the chips in this trailer. The pipe, yep, there it goes. Cool. All right, so we, um, yeah, I, I knew we were gonna need two more trailers in total uh, to do that. But I thought we might fill them up a little more than we did, but that's fine. That's good. We have, based upon, let's see, last time we had two full cramp trailers. Uh, no, we had one full cramp trailer, a full Stroutman, and then a partial Stroutman. We made, we made like 79 grand off of that. So we probably, I think we have a little more this time. So we're probably look, gonna make about $100,000-ish off of this, uh, which is well worth it. Something just occurred to me, you guys. We don't have to store these chips in our tippers. We can go dump them in the st train station and store them there until January. Chances are, are pretty darn good that um, Goldcrest Valley will give the best price anyways. And even if they don't, then we can just load up straight from the train station and take them to wherever else. Um, let's just look at the prices now. Yeah, see, Goldcrest, Goldcrest is almost always going to have the best price anyway. So yeah, that that makes things a lot easier. So all I, we really need to do is just run these over and dump the chips in the train station and just store them there. I'm glad I remembered to do that because then that doesn't tie up our tippers. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that. I'm going to go dump them off, and then uh, it frees up our trailers, and we'll sell our chips probably in January. Okay, that is all, but I need to let you guys go here, and we're also finished with the tree grinder thingy too, so let's, let's return that. What a nice tool, man, for this, for this kind of work. You coming? All right, so yeah, I'm going to let you guys go here. We will start up the next episode... What I think I'm going to do is let's start up the next episode with a time lapse of some of the plowing. I'm not going to show all of it, but I'll show some of it. And we'll go from there. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.